Okay, our, now moving out to globular clusters, which are probably about as far as uh, that Mordor star, okay, right. on average. Um, our, our next group is a mix of Maui and Oahu students. We have Nalu Clemens, who is a first-time participant from Kaiser High School. Um, uh, Luca Masuda, who is also first-time from McKinley High School. And in the middle here is Kenneth Menegdeg, who is coming to us from Maui High School. And he was, he, he was in a Maui High Star last year, so second time. Okay, um, mentor for this project. Now, the interesting thing about the mentors for this project is they are undergraduate mentors because the University of Hawaii now has an astronomy program. So we're very proud. Let me ask you to stand up. So you guys, that's um, Kaimi Kaimi Koro and Marielle Dela Cruz, and uh, they're both, uh, well, you're sort of a, a June more, sort of a soft, a soft, entering sophomore to junior year, yeah, uh, I guess so, entering sophomore year and entering senior year this fall, is that right, Marielle? Great, okay, no programs. All right, you guys, take it away. All right, so, uh, I'm Kenneth. Hi, my name is Loka, and I come from McKinley. Hi, my name is Nalu. I attend Kaiser High School. And our project is using color magnitude diagrams and isochrones to determine ages of globular clusters. <coughs> All right, so globular clusters, or GC, are spherical groupings of whole stars ranging from 10,000 to a, uh, a million, um, mostly co composed of uh, sorry. Stars with a solar mass less than 0 0.8, so meaning that uh, they're they're very old and metal poor. Also, they're actually located on the halo of the galaxy, so they're that's why they're identified as uh, satellites galaxies. Okay, so our project was based on our. At least our project objective is to graph a color magnitude diagram, which is, this is a sample, um, of three globular cluster sets. Um, so what our goal is here is to locate the turnoff point, um, which will be discussed a little bit later, but um, around here, this is the turnoff point. And we'll be also using um, isochrome models to graph and fit the isochromes right on top of the cluster diagram. So what this essentially does is that the isochrome the isochrome models are going to help us determine, or at least find an estimate age of the three globular clusters. And then we'll also be using a histogram to find the percent composition of blue stars, which indicates that um, more blue stars equals that there's more, or the clusters are more younger. So we use observational data from Hubble, uh, from the Hubble archive to analyze M3, M54, and M80. And we also utilize the B filter, which is up for blue light, and the I filter for infrared light. Okay, so for the methods of doing this project, um, like um, Nala said, that we're using the uh, globular cluster data from the Hubble Space Telescope archives and essentially grabbing it to make a color magnitude diagrams. And um, as mentioned earlier, we're also using the data and the graphs for the isochromes to fit in with the globular cluster diagrams. And so what we're doing is we're basically trying to fit this isochrome to match with the globular cluster, which you'll see a picture of it later. Um, so when we were first graphing the isochrome data, we noticed that the isochrome wasn't actually on top of the globular cluster diagram. It was slightly either more to um, the bottom of it or to the right. So we had to adjust a little bit more of the isochrome, so we had to apply some color offsets and distance moduluses. And so here's the distance modulus of what we did, and color offsets for each of the clusters. And then, as well as we used the chi-squared formula to, and the error propagation to determine which of the isochromes best fits the um, globular cluster data so that we can get a rough estimate of the year. So the turnoff point is the phase where the stars, or the stars, starts dis dispersing from the main sequence. So that be in this area. Uh -huh. And uh, these are important to know 
oh, it is important to know that the sharper the turnoff point is, the younger the cluster is. And, um, oh yeah. Oh uh, yeah, okay, isochrones. Isochrones are adjustable models of data sets. We can use to estimate cluster, cluster ages. So for our results. So for our clusters, using the isochrome fittings, we were able to um, estimate uh, their ages right here. And then we also researched their actual ages to find a difference. And we discovered that their average percent difference was about 30% off. So as mentioned earlier, this is um, one of our, uh, or this is actually the three data sets uh, of the diagrams that we use for the clusters. So we have M3 right here, M80, M54. And then um, these blue dots here represents the globular clusters diagram. And these, um, this line that um, seems to trace over the dots is the isochromes. So what I uh, mentioned earlier is that we're trying to find which isochrome from 9 giga years to 13 giga years with the isochromes fit so that we can see which, or we can estimate which of the years of the globular cluster is. So as you can see here, this um, M80's uh, isochrome is a little off, um, but as you can see for the rest of these, um, the odd distance offsets are all um, calculated through using the chi-squared and um, also using the color offsets as a set value. So what are blue stars? Blue stars are basically very large, um, high mass, really hot stars that live very short lives. So within a cluster, if you find a lot of blue stars, that denotes that your cluster is actually very young. So the more blue stars, the younger your cluster. And it's also important to note that not all of these blue stars are in fact blue stars, as some can be blue stragglers. So we generated histograms to confirm the given isochromes from each target. The B minus I uh, on the X axis was shoots. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Um, so yeah. So the B minus I on the X axis uh, is indicates that the blue stars from the the blue stars from the color magnitude um blue stars or just like Nalu said blue stars are known to have a range of less than 0 0.7 so um so from adding all the all the blue stars together we concluded that uh M3 <coughs> has the most blue stars out of the three targets. And, oh, and so, yeah, he has the most blue stars, and that also means that it's, it's the youngest out of the three clusters. So in conclusion with this project, we found that the ages of the GCs, or light clusters, were between 11 to 13 giga years, or 11 to 13 billion years. Um, so this means that the clusters that we received were relatively old ages of globular clusters. And in our experiment, like um, Kenneth said, M3 has the highest percentage of blue stars in the histogram, which indicates that it has, or it is the youngest cluster of the three that we observed. And this is also agreeing to the chi-squared formula when given out a value, um, because the chi-squared had a lower value than all of the, the rest of the um, globular clusters. So which means that, um, this supports the theory that the isochrome is in fact determined by the younger age and that the blue stars also proves that the isochrome um, proves the age. So if we were to include the metal acidity and reddening offsets, um, because the metal acidity and the reddenings were both on a um, set values, um, the chi-squared calculations would be more accurate. So in our um, data, we did get a little bit, um, we did get our, uh, giga years estimated off in our experiment. So if we were to have a more a set value to those uh, running and metallicity values, then we would have a more uh, accurate data set. 
But in overall, we did get pretty close to the actual giga years in compared to the estimated. And to acknowledgments, okay. <laughs> uh, we would like to thank the High Star Program for giving us this opportunity to experience more knowledge in astronomy. And we would also like to thank Dr. Matthews, Dr. Armstrong, and Mr. Nasser, uh, Mary Koduka for the High Star Program, Michaela Wendo, our counselor, and our huge thanks to Kaimi Kahifo and Mariel De La Cruz for being the awesome mentors and dedicating our time to help us out. <laughs> um, um, I heart high star fellow staff and students and friends and especially our audience right here for coming and supporting us out. So I mean close to the years we have to for it to So in our um, data set, if looking back, um, first uh, we're looking back to the uh, chi-squared uh, calculations, and the oldest of the three sets were act was actually um, M54, and this also proves in the histogram, because if you compare it to the other rest, um, M54 has less of the overall uh, blue star counts, which means that indicate that it is the more older stars, and has more red stars than blue stars. Any other questions? Yes. Um, so, like in the one in one of the slides, when you guys talk about globular cluster characteristics, you said like, um, like something like the, the stars are like metal four. What do you guys mean by like the metal? Like, what's like the <laughs> okay, so metal poor in astronomical terms uh, is referring to all elements heavier than helium. So that's lithium and onwards on a periodic table. Is there a good question that um, some of those older stars are uh, dead now and that we're just still receiving the light from the past? Um, yes, it's very possible. Um, so I said something about blue stragglers. So basically those are blue stars that were supposed to die off but didn't uh, due to some complicated physics and also <laughs> companion um, binary systems. So in short, in short words, uh, basically what happens is um, a really small mass star is orbiting a, a higher mass star that is going into the red giant phase. So basically the mass from the expanding swelling star kind of carries over into a smaller mass star. So yeah. Although I, th I think your question was asked was actually, is the light still traveling to us from those right, stars? Right. The stars are dead and gone but the light is still on its way. Do you know how far away these clusters are? Uh, oh, one of them is 10 parsecs. It would be tens of thousands of light years or tens of thousands of parsecs. Okay. So if any of them died within the last 10 to 100,000 years, the light, we might still see it at the telescope now, but the light is just still coming to us from when it was still existing. Right? Okay, great. Okay, let's, let's take our group one last time.